Red button pressed, I am recording. I'm now liable. And now so am I. <laughs> yeah, anything you say now can and will be held against you in yeah. a court of law. We do save these just in case they, uh, they need to be used <laughs> as evidence later. Oh, no one's no, we don't, that. actually. <laughs> I mean, we do post them live, though, so if... Grace, if you are ever sued, like, it is right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> on the internet <laughs> for everyone it, to see. Yeah, if you need to prove or disprove something. Uh. Exactly. So, hello everyone, first of all. I sh we should really get in the habit of just saying hi and introducing ourselves. That's my New Year's resolution, I think. So, <laughs> welcome to Fanfix and Chill. Hey. I'm James. Joining me is Nick. Hi. And Grace. Hello. And we're here to read, read some fanfiction and chill, just like the name suggests. Yeah. So, we've taken a bit of a break for Christmas and for most of January. How are we all doing? Um, pretty well. I uh, used the intervening time to uh, to build my rover back up and get it back on the road, but uh -huh. it's currently still sat in my back garden because it decided to spring a leak. So now I need to fix the leak before I can use it. Uh -huh. So Good luck with that. Yeah, I'm sure it will be fine. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else eventful. Because we're also recording the Doctor Who episode today. We don't want to use all our fun stories in one go. No, no, not at all. What fun stories you can get from a January where you were exactly. paid early, and I mean we did have an interesting day. time in December. To be fair, yeah, yeah, we we saw each other, which was quite nice. We all met up, and uh, we all went to York Rail Museum together. Yes, we did. Because my train home was cancelled, and Nick said, "I'll drive you a third of the way, as long as we stop at York on the way <laughs> to go look at the trains." <laughs> Actually, actually, and I said, I, you know what? Fine, <laughs> we'll I, do it. <laughs> I recall that I said to you, well, you were saying, well, what can we do? What's on the way? And I'm like, well, the railway museum's open. And you were like, yeah, mm -hmm. okay then. <laughs> to be fair, it was Grace that said okay then, just on my phone. <laughs> yeah, it was me. I was like, yeah, I'll go. Because <laughs> Grace James had never just, been before. Yeah, and James just, just like, died you know what? inside. Okay. okay, sure, sure, we'll go. Uh, it wasn't exactly on the way. It was kind of an hour outside of our direction. <laughs> it was, yeah. I, and we uh, did have to dash back. Yeah, I did get very worried that you were going to miss your train. Mm. And did yeah, you miss we your lucked train? out. No, no. Okay. Oh, but, uh, but yeah, we had a fairly good time there. I think mm. that's fair to say. I mean, I got bored by the second building. Full disclosure. <laughs> but you guys seemed like you had a good time. Were you not impressed by the absolutely massive? Locomotive? I was impressed by the massive one. It's just, after a while, they all just sort of blurred in together, I should say. Uh, that's that's fine, um, as much as I... But I ran out of steam by the hey. 20th train. Let, <laughs> let's say that much. Well done. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, we saw some fairly noteworthy trains there. Yeah, I think Grace has a new special interest. <laughs> so. Grace, do you have a new special interest? I'm still on the fence, to be honest. Okay. I haven't... I haven't really settled on anything yet. Mm -hmm. Right then, I guess we're all going to the Seven Valley Railway Spring Diesel Gala then. <laughs> Put a hammer at home. <laughs> to go window hanging. <laughs> so, talking of trains we saw. Okay. I have here a fic. Okay. Wow, really? It's called Mallard. Oh my god. It's by Red Wyvern. I always read it as Wyvern, which, yeah, different spelling. Red Wyvern writes, who it's is Red, a. Red Riven writes. Oh. Well, yeah, there's another R in there. Oh. Um, okay, I can't read. I should probably lead with that. <laughs> I am ter <laughs> I made a mistake starting this podcast. I cannot read. <laughs> um, it's 4,000 words long. Oh. Which means it's short enough to cover on fanfics and chill. And oh, nice. I kindly reached out to the author saying, hey, can we cover this? They said yes. I haven't told Nick this is what we were doing. <laughs> so... <laughs> I kind of wanted that to be a surprise. Yeah, you, you did tell me there was a surprise, and you forbade me from going on AO3, which yes. I, I stuck by. I figured you would fair. notice this, because it's also <laughs> got the tag Nigel Gresley on it. Yes! Cause, so, I got a message from Red Wyvern, and they said, Nick will be pleased to know there are now two fix with Nigel Gresley in the tags. Yes. <laughs> so I went. I went and looked into it, and I was like, "Oh, oh, this this is short enough. We could talk about it. Can can we talk about it?" And then yeah, they said, "Yeah." So here we are. This is fantastic, as you might not know, my boy Grizzly, best chief mechanical engineer there ever was. So the very uh, best, like no one ever was. Yep, yeah, exactly. To make them go faster was his real test. 
Mm-hmm. To, to build them is his call. Is his call. Do, do, do. He okay. will travel across the East Coast Main Line. <laughs> Such a far <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, shit. Team Rocket works in that situation. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Team Stevenson and... Fuck, I don't know who else. <laughs> uh, the thing is... Um... It kind of well, I suppose it kind of does because of course Team Rocket are really incompetent. Okay. So when you compare Rocket to some of Gresley's designs, like uh, you know the V twos, the A threes, the A fours, it would look sort of like really outdated and very old fashioned. I was going to say, in fairness, they've had a lot of time building off that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like, have. I don't think that's a fair comparison to Rocket. <laughs> no, no, it is. You can't but... call it shit just because it's older. <laughs> No, Rocket was very good for its time, but if you exactly. if you put it up against yeah something like Mallard, then yeah, it's it's gonna lose. Bless it. Okay. Especially so, since Rocket doesn't run anymore. Yeah, that's a big part of it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's really fair to race them in that case. <laughs> so our characters, we've got Mallard. Hey. We've got Nigel Gresley. Oh, so um. I've but got... also Sir Nigel Gresley. Oh, the both, both the. I get the. F- that's kind of what I'm getting from the tags. Full disclosure: I've not read this yet. I like to go in blind when we do these as much as possible. So, so it's, it's we'll both see. the man and the locomotive. That's the impression I'm getting. Um, fun fact: Sir Nigel Gresley. You know what? Like... Yeah, it actually is because one of the tags has a birth date and a death date. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but trains can't legally die. They cannot legally die. They can be scrapped. But okay. Yeah. You don't really put birth dates and death dates on, mm-hmm. you know. So, so it is both. Sir Nigel isn't the human. That's the impression I'm getting. So, fun fact, Sir Nigel Gracely, the locomotive, my very, very favourite locomotive, and probably the one which kicked off my love of trains. Oh. After seeing it come out of the fog uh, across a railway crossing while I was out in the car with my... It just uh, sort of clicked for you. <laughs> yeah, with my, gra- with my grandma. I sort of looked up at that from my grandma's little Vauxhall Nova, uh, coming out of the fog with just a breath of steam on, and I thought, yes, I would like to learn more about those. And here I am today. That little box from Starship Troopers pops up, just, would you like to know more? It's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hammering that button. So, Flying Scotsman, also here. Yay. And Bittern. Ah, yeah, Bittern, another A4. So, for people who didn't listen to our last episode, this is... It's somewhat in the Thomas the Tank Engine universe, in that all of these trains are sentient. Mm -hmm. But as far as I can tell, there's no direct connection to Thomas the Tank Engine, at least not that we've seen yet. uh, It's just sort of using Thomas rules. Yeah, there is in the sec- in the subsequent parts of, of Young Iron, like um, uh-huh. a lot of the real life locomotives find their way to the island of Sodor, and uh-huh. you know. Okay, Nick, I imagine you'd like to narrate this one. I would very much like to narrate this one. Yes, Grace, you're narrating this one. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, Nick. Take it away. Um, right then. So hold on. Uh, we need to you... establish who else is doing characters, though. <laughs> If you make Grace do this one, I will interject as often as I can with train facts, and the episode will end up being ten hours long. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next in rating, that's so that means we've me and Grace have five characters to divvy up between ourselves. Okay. Can I have the Flying Scotsman? If you want, mate. I know cool. what you're going to try and do. I bet you do. <laughs> yeah. Even though the Flying Scotsman was built in Doncaster. I, I don't think. care. I know you don't. He's going to be Sean Connery. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be super sketchy. (laughs) I can see why you wanted to do this. It wasn't to do with the trains at all. No, of course not. It's to do with me doing (laughs) Sean Connery voice. (laughs) You didn't want to do something nice for your your bud. (laughs) You just wanted to do a sketchy Scottish accent. Uh, Please, I could do that for anything. (laughs) Uh, Grace, any other... Thoughts? Who you want to play? Hmm. <laughs> Can't say I really mind. We'll see who comes up. Because I okay. haven't read it yet. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. We'll stop when we get to characters, and like we can figure it out as we go. Yeah, we can always sort it out in the edit, can't we, Jim? No. Oh, that'd be oh. so much work. <laughs> That's so much to re-record all the voices. Are you insane? <laughs> I meant we could cut the bit out where we're deciding who who gets to play the character. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. We can do that. 
It's as if he doesn't trust us, Nick. Yeah, I know. I feel quite hurt by those. Why do you think that is, Grace? I don't know. Why do you think I don't trust you, Grace? I don't know. You can all listen to our Doctor Who episode to find out why I don't trust Grace. It was too good. It was too good. Your face is priceless. (laughs) More on that later. Right. I hate Shall you. we start? Yeah, Nick, over oh, to you. Oh, there's a really cool picture of the train with a, with a mallard duck on it. Oh, that's so cute. So, um, I have a story about the, the mallard duck. Before you do, I have a story about the picture. Oh, okay. uh, this This is by Bakuna Wart. Bakuna W-A Art. Uh, that's also the author. They go by that tag elsewhere. Okay. Right, so. I know what I'm following on Instagram now. Yes. Right, fantastic. Uh, so, basically... To commemorate the great man, Sir Nigel Grossley, they decided to do a bronze statue of him, um, which would stand outside Edinburgh Waverley Station, of course, uh, terminus of the famous Flying Scotsman service, which went from uh, King's Cross to Edinburgh Waverley. Mm-hmm. Um, they decided to do a life-size statue of Sir Nigel Grossley. They wanted to put a mallard at his feet, because he was sort of, as, as well as locomotives, he liked ducks and waterfowl and stuff like that that was one of his interests oh okay but his family complained uh, like his descendants complained thought it cheapened the statue and therefore the mallard was taken away oh what bastards back. yeah like a Give lot of people ducks. were like it's yeah he he liked ducks that's why all his air nearly all his air falls were named after waterfowl <laughs> cool. so yeah that's the story of the mallard uh, okay, where would you like me to start? Would you like me to do notes first? Anywhere you like. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so I'll read the summary. The A4 Pacific, Mallard, is the fastest steam engine in the world. But Mallard thinks his name is silly. It's not the name of a fierce bird like his siblings, Falcon or Golden Eagle. Nor is it elegant like Wild Swan or embraces his speed like Peregrine. Upset after being teased by some stannier engines... Mallard goes to his designer to demand his name be changed, but he finds out that his name means much more than he realises. Hmm. This is this oh, yeah. is going to be fluffy, isn't it, I think? Uh, oh yeah, the tags do say fluff. Fluff from me? No. <laughs> and tormenting bitter and about birds. Brilliant. Um, okay, so this story is set shortly after Mallard's world record run, uh, where Flying okay. Scotsman is still an A1 like Gordon. Uh, if you want to look more into that remark... Do it on your own time, because if I start to explain it, Jim Sill will leave his body. I was actually prepped to tell you no more uh, no more side <laughs> tangents. We do need to keep this roughly half an hour to an hour. Yes, yes we do. Okay, so I'll start. Mallard was surprised to find an LMS Jubilee and a Stania Black 5 loitering around the station as he waited for his train. Uh, Grace, do you want to be Mallard? Oh, I don't know. You want, I thought you want, oh no, you wanted to be the fine Scotsman. Yeah, I was getting Scotsman. <laughs> what sort of voice does Mallard have, do you reckon? I I think Sonic the Hedgehog, because he's blue and the fastest thing alive. Yeah, blue got to go Shut fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do an American accent. Oh, well, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. No, what are you yeah. standing is doing here? He shouted oh, angrily. Oh, God, that's so <laughs> you're, awful. You're really Fine. getting some fucking mileage out this voice, aren't you? <laughs> Damn right. Uh <laughs> Grace, you can do it instead, if you want. No, it's fine. If you want to do that, you do that, bro. I don't care. Okay. I really don't want my lad to be American. Fine. I'll I'll figure <laughs> I'll figure it out as we go. I, I did mine. <laughs> is that is, is that it, what it you're got going lost with? In everything. <laughs> fine, I'll do it again. It got lost in translation. What are you Staniers doing here? He shouted angrily at them. It's still American. Yeah, I've got one Metal Gear on it. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. What are you standing here still doing here? He shouted angrily at them. The red and black engines looked at him. This is a primary connection for a lot of trade routes, you hideous wedge. The Jubilee snapped <laughs> back. It might be in LNER territory, but we need to use it too. Right, who's playing the Black Five? So, Black Five, Workman's Machines, Go Anywhere Engines. Yeah, there's no need to be rude about it. The Black Five (laughs) glared at him. I don't see what the fuss is about. Gresley's Ace Fours are just a bunch of rude, uncouth upstarts who think they're better than everyone else. Maybe you should have some respect for your better engineered machines like us. Better engineered machines? Mallard thundered furiously. 
Oh, have you know that I beat those hideous, ugly things that Stania calls streamlined? Hideous, ugly things. The jubilee shrieked, the red engine's voice shrill and piercing. <laughs> Coronations are beautiful and graceful things. How dare you insult your beautiful cousin? You. You. The Black Five stopped as he noticed the nameplate on Mallard's side. He suddenly burst into laughter. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Good grief. Also oh, funny, you square-wheeled Stanier. Mallard snapped at him. You may have beaten our dear coronation, but you still have a stupid name. He laughed. A, a duck. A duck is the fastest engine in the world named after a stupid duck. I wouldn't be surprised if someone beat your record just to stop you from embarrassing every steam engine out there. The Jubilee and Black Five dissolved into laughter, while Mallard sat there fuming furiously, feeling as if he was about to blow a valve. They began quacking and making dog noises at him, and he took every <laughs> rivet in his boiler not to explode at the mocking Stanniers. <laughs> That's a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant line. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Easy, big fuck. Yeah, you, yeah, you can be driver. <laughs> driver and Mallard have fucking made it! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Congrats. Well done, Nick. <laughs> Easy, big fella, his driver called to him gently. They're not worth it. Mallard blasted steam and was about to give the two LMS engines an earful when the sudden blast of an A1's whistle pierced the air. The two LMS engines quieted down as they saw who was coming down the line towards them and appeared to make themselves sit higher on their frames. The large apple green A1 with the number 4472 stared at them with disdain in his gaze. How long have you LMS boys been loitering here? This is a busy station. If you're not picked up a train, then clear off. The engine ordered them. None of this blocking the lines business you both seem to be doing. Flawless. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to the Scottish. <laughs> Apologies to the Scottish and Flying Scotsman. <laughs> and me, just because I hated it. I'm sorry, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, yeah, we, we're already starting off the new year with a scrap. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> we're all good friends here. Oh, poo. <laughs> Hold on. I accidentally hit the back button. I've lost the fic. Oh, no. Professionalism. Professionalism how how many years have we been doing this? We are so good at this. Right, let me open it up again. The Jubilee looked ready to argue, but the Black Five looked at 4472 with a worried gaze. The A1 glared at them as he pulled up alongside Mallard. My apologies, Flying Scotsman. The Black Five exclaimed diplomatically. We'll be right on our way and back to our railway. They glanced at Mallard and giggled. It wasn't until Flying Scotsman started advancing towards them menacingly that the two <laughs> engines immediately backed off and quickly sped away down the line. Oh, the you're approaching me. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of moving away, you're coming closer. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have to put a JoJo reference into everything? I do. <laughs> it's my curse. Fucking... Why are the words Gresley's Bizarre Adventure yeah. <laughs> marching with ill-deserved confidence in the com in the direction of this I know. podcast? <laughs> it's just advancing towards him menacingly is what made me think it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <sighs> they weren't about to start something with the LNER's most prestigious engine and make Stania and LMS look like fools. It wouldn't be good if the famous engine decided to make a complaint to the board of directors of the LNER and potentially close an important route for the LMS. Mallard glared at his cousin as the big green A1 began reversing back down the line to sit next to him. Are you all right, Mallard? Scott's at the fart moan, but... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got too into it. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I'm well into this. <laughs> Scotsman asked right. uh, of the A4 Pacific who glared at him. I can fight my own battle, Scotsman. Mallard snarled at the A1 Pacific as he was watching the LMS engine speeding away, giggling to themselves. I'm just here to help. Flying Scotsman insisted. I don't like to see you being bullied by those square-wheeled LMS fools. Mallard just <laughs> humphed at him. That's Mallard. So, I know, I had a sniffle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You've just got to collect yourself. Uh, I just, so much snot running down the inside of my nose, it's not even funny. This is all going in. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> At least I don't let myself be embarrassed by letting Stania beat my record. Oh. 
The A4 fan. huffed and the Scotsman narrowed his eyes at him. Yeah, yeah, they've got they've got a face on the front. Yeah, oh, it's shit, the Thomas yeah. the Tank Engine universe, isn't it? Yeah, of yeah. course. Oh fuck me. I mean, I, I should have known that from the fact they're talking at all, to be honest. But you know, there are more important things than speed records, Mallard. Scotsman reminded him, but Mallard just huffed indignantly, and Scotsman gave a tired sigh. I know Greshley and the directors are fretting about it, but it's more important to keep the railway running smoothly. That's exactly what someone who let our competitors win would say. Mallard shouted angry. Uh, so, sorry. <clears throat> That's exactly what someone who let our competitors win would say. <laughs> Mallard shouted angrily, and Scotsman rolled his eyes. Mallard's being a little bit of a cunt here. <laughs> he's, he's very embarrassed, bless him. Yeah. Mallard. Don't call me by that stupid name. Mallard snarled at the A1. They're at least right about one thing. Mallard is a stupid name for an engine. As powerful and fast as myself. Flying Scotsman looked shocked. <laughs> that name meant a lot to Sha Greshley. He tried to explain to the puffed up, upset A4 Pacific. You should be honoured to be named after something so dear to him. Mallard seethed. Much how you and Polly run the top shed. Mallard! I've had enough of you, underachiever! Mallard shouted angrily at him, and Flying Scotsman looked hurt. Stop telling me what to do. You're not great, Northern! <laughs> yes, I'm great Scottish. <laughs> I'm just trying to be helpful. The Flying Scotsman explained, but Mallard was having none of it and wished a blast of steam in Scotsman's face and set off without another word, leaving the green engine to sit and stare at the back of his tender with an angry pout. Ridiculous. Scotsman muttered <laughs> before setting off to find his own train. <laughs> I've missed a trick here. What? I should have uh, channeled my inner Ringo star. Yes, you yeah. really should have done. Shall we do the rest of this in Ringo Star? <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to pull it off, to be fair. Oh, do your best. <laughs> Ringo Star, the fat conductor. Oh yes. Maybe, maybe. Maybe Grace, Grace should, should be narrating this. this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick, you just can't be Ringo Star like Grace can. Um, that night, Mallard entered his shed disgruntled and fuming. The words of the Stanier engines had stuck with him all day, and he couldn't stop thinking about them. Okay, so because Merlin is named after a wizard, I'm going to do my best Gandalf impression. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's fine. Merlin okay. is another A4, by the way. You seem troubled, little brother. His older brother, Merlin, called to him, sounding deeply concerned. What's wrong? Mallard just let off steam and backed into his berth, a sour look on his face. Uh, who's, is, is that Merlin still? His little brother... Gadwell. Gadwell. Oh, Gadwell. Any ideas? I don't know, he's younger, isn't he? You know what, sure. If <laughs> if Merlin gets the Gandalf voice, Gadwell gets the Harry Potter voice. Oh, God. Maybe Miss Quicksilver was being bossy again. Or Great Northern was being a big meanie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, fair friend. enough. His little brother... I'm so sorry to the writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His little brother Gadwell piped up, but Mallard just glared at the younger engine and gave an indignant humph, not wanting to speak to either. Mallard, please tell me what's wrong. The elder A4 asked him kindly. I want to help you. Mallard stared at his buffers for a long while, before looking back up at Merlin, who was smiling at him, at him kindly. The famous blue A4 relented and let his guard drop and let himself be vulnerable for his favourite brother. Some of the... LMS engine said my name was stupid. He mumbled quietly. Oh, Mallard. Merlin exclaimed <laughs> with a sad smile. Oh, oh Mallard. Mallard. <laughs> you know Aww. those engines are nothing but boisterous loudmouths who bark but never bite. I uh, know, but... Mallard's face creased into one of disdain. They have a point. Compared to our siblings, my name isn't very exciting. They're, they're named after silver important people or birds of prey, and there's just me, a duck. I'm pretty sure Bitten's a kind of duck. Gadwell pointed out, and Mallard glared at him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even sure what a bittern is. Merlin mused thoughtfully. Stop it. Mallard suddenly Stop shouted. making fun of my name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I can tell you're into playing the role of Mallard. I, I know. I've gone into it. <laughs> Stop making fun of my name. We're not making fun of your name, Mallard. Merlin assured him. Maybe you can ask Sir Nigel Gresley to change it. 
Gadwell put in. Mallard's eyes lit up at the suggestion. Yes, yes I could. He exclaimed excitedly, but Merlin looked unsure. Now, Mallard, Sir Gresley's probably gave you that name for a reason. Merlin warned the younger A4. Perhaps it isn't the best idea to question our designer's will. Nonsense! Mallard barked, annoyed. I am the fastest engine in the world. I am deserving of a name befitting of my title. He gave a huge whoosh of steam as he felt the pressure in his boiler climb back up. Mallard, wait. Merlin called after him as he began to steam away, a determined look on the younger engine's face. He quickly disappeared out of the shed and into the night without another word. A tense silence hung over the shed for a few electrifying moments. It was only broken when the youngest A4 Pacific looked at Merlin innocently and suddenly asked, So why is there a lot of us named after birds? Perfect. (laughs) Thank you. When Mallard arrived at the LNER workshop late that night, only a few lights remained on. Most of the engineers and factory workers had gone home for the night. Although most of the people in the workshop had gone home, Mallard could rely on Sir Gresley to be working late and refining his latest designs or improving older ones. The man worked as hard, if not harder, than his own engines. It was something that they all appreciated and looked up to in the man. It made them proud to be his designs, his creations. They saw him as a father-like figure and held the utmost respect for him. Who wants to be Gresley? Uh, I mean, I probably should since Mallard is the main character and communicating with him. (laughs) Uh, I think that's probably uh, probably wise, yeah. Uh, What accent should Sir Gresley have? Um, I always thought sort of clipped English home counties, you know. That's a tough one. Yeah, it is. I don't know what home counties Yeah, I've never been 100%. Like living in this country for this long. The sort of RP accent you used to hear on TV. Okay. Oh. Mallard, do you have a problem? That sort of thing. <laughs> That's more Winston Churchill Mallard, there, but... You have a problem. Yes, yeah, sort of. I'm bad at accents, as you know. Um... Do, do a Churchill impression. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Mallard! <laughs> That's less Churchill, more Harry Seacombe, I think. Oh, well. in Oliver. You know what? <laughs> He's getting Matt Berry. Fair enough. Mallard. Sir Gresley questioned oh, the enormous A4 Pacific, who had just rolled into his workshop. Do you have a problem? No, sir. Mallard addressed the man politely. At least not a mechanical one. Sir Gresley gave a soft hum and looked at his engine, intrigued. Well then, my dear Mallard, please enlighten this old chap. He urged with concern. (laughs) Sorry, just fucking... uh, I want a comedy movie made about the the world record attempt in the 1930s and I want Matt Berry to play Sir Nigel Gresley. That would be good. Yeah. (laughs) Mallard wasn't really an engine that was outspoken. Impulsive and brash, yes, but not at all outspoken. Not unless provoked. He was young, not even a year old, and still running himself in. He was bound to be still unsure and hesitant about things. Sir, earlier today I was at a station, a couple of Stenier engines were there. Mallard admitted quietly, frightened of his designer's reaction. Sir Grizzly frowned at him, his brows creased into a glare at the mention of his rival's name. Mallard felt fear creep into his boiler and he began to fumble his words. Sorry, sir, I shouldn't have mentioned his name. Mallard immediately backpedalled, but Sir Grizzly raised a hand for the engine to stop. So we have established this is human Gresley. Okay. This is human Gresley, yes. It's okay, Mallard. Please yes. go on. What did these engines do? They, they made fun of my shape, sir. Mallard explained, and Sir Grizzly gave a tot and pulled a face. But in return, I made fun of their coronation for being so bulky and ugly. I suppose that was wrong. Nah, it? that's fair enough. They do look like upturned bathtubs, but there we go. <laughs> a stealthy smirk appeared on the old man's face, but it disappeared as quickly as it appeared. It was. But it is not entirely unfounded. His designer explained. He then looked stern and disappointed. But I expect you to act better than Stania's engines and not engage in petty arguments when they try to provoke you. Do you understand? Mallard looked at his buffers shamefully. He did not like disappointing Sir Gresley. Yes, sir, I'll try. Mallard promised, but Sir Gresley shook his head. No, I expect you to do, not try, Mallard. He clarified. I really do should or, have gone with Yoda for this one. Do or do not, there is yeah. no try. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I expect you to... I can't do a Yoda, never mind. <laughs> you could just start by doing Yoda now and just no, not say anything. I expect you to do, not try, my lad. No, no. He clarified. <laughs> That's fucking it's vain. Already... 
Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? Can we just fucking <laughs> <laughs> let's not bury this into ground any further I mean, than we have to? Bane and Yoda are pretty close when you really think about it. <laughs> you think that steam design, uh, steam engine designing principles are your ally? You think you were born in the furnace? <laughs> no, I thought I can't remember oh, the line. <laughs> Fuck it. I was born in Doncaster Works, moulded by it. <laughs> I, I didn't see a, a a road till I was already a man. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Sorry. Fucking hell. <laughs> okay. It's your line, Grace. It is your line. All right. I was waiting for Nick to say he clarified before going oh. on. Oh, okay. He, can... he clarified. <laughs> Jim, edit Thank the rest you. of this out. No, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. I won't rise to the Stanier's engine insult. <laughs> Mallard promised, and Sir Grizzly smiled at him. There's a good engine, he praised. <laughs> he praised Sorry. Mallard, and the blue A4 felt proud. Was that all? Mallard looked away from Sir Grizzly, nervous now. There is one more thing, sir. It's about my name. Mallard hesitantly put to the man, and the man frowned deeply at him. I'm sorry, he's just going to be Bane now. I gave oh, you that no, name, James. Mallard. It means a lot to me. He oh, explained. You fucking... <laughs> I can't get the other voice back. We're just all in on Bane. I can I can hear Grace slowly dying inside. I'm sorry, Grace. <laughs> I'm desperately trying to punch my soul back into my body. <laughs> uh, he explained. His tone sounded quite disappointed and had a layer of sadness to it. I understand that, sir, but... Mallard looked at his designer. It's not really a name befitting of an engine with my record. My siblings all have names that entail speed or something fierce and dominating. But then I'm just Mallard. I'd like to have it changed to something more appropriate, sir. Sir Grizzly felt hurt at the engine's admission, but he could see how being named Mallard could make the engine come to hate the name. Mallards weren't the fastest bird. They weren't known for their grace in the wider world. Yet the name held a lot of significance for him. He stared thoughtfully at his famous blue engine. Said engine become, becoming ever more nervous the more time passed in silence. Finally, he nodded to the A4. I do see your concerns, Mallard. He conceded. He then paused before continuing. Do you have any trains tomorrow? Yes, sir. I'm taking the Flying Scotsman. Not any more. Sir Grizzly ordered, and Mallard panicked. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Please don't take my train away from me. He begged, but Sir Grizzly shook his head. You're not in any trouble, Mallard. I just want to take you on a private little trip tomorrow. Mallard stopped panicking and gazed down at his designer, although slivers of doubt ran through his boiler. Yes, sir. You can sleep in the workshop tonight. I do not feel like going down and collecting you early next morning. Sir Grizzly explained as he went to grab his coat. I bid you good night, Mallard. Good night, sir. Mallard wished his designer well, and he was left alone in the workshop. That's kind of bad. He's like, right, you're not going home. Sleep on my couch. That's an order. I can't be asked to go meet you in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's also like, he hasn't said where they're going, either. Mm. That's Victorian parenting for you, baby. <laughs> God, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's better than having like his back engine slapped over his knee. <laughs> this, this is true. It is. It, it is. You'll be than a thankful tender. for being named after a fucking duck. <laughs> <laughs> no porridge for you. No coal. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting quite fluffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm wondering how based in the truth this is. Like, are we going to find out what the real reason is for why it's called Mallard? Uh, I can say we are. Before Nick wants to go into it. Sorry, Nick, to cut you off. Yes, fantastic. But um, I'm kind of uh, liking this, and also, uh, as an LNER fanboy, I'm quite liking all the LMS hate going on. <laughs> That's fucking fantastic. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. We don't hate the LMS. Well, I mean, we, we don't hate any railway company, apart from the Great Western, but that's different. So. <laughs> okay. We don't hate anyone, apart from Great West and they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> okay. Tell you what, I'm just looking at the clock. Shall we leave it here and then pick up next time? Hang on, we've got one. Uh, it's it's okay. up to you. I don't mind splitting, but if you want to if you want to continue, then we can continue. Okay. We're going to wrap this up, and we're going to pick this up next time, in that case. Okay. Uh, Anything for more content? 
Yeah, I'm, well, it's not just that. <laughs> it's also that I want us to have enough energy to record Doctor Who after this. No, that's fine. I mean, I'm I'm full of energy. I just got 40 minutes of pretending to be Ringo Starr. <laughs> Effectively. Fair. Okay. Uh, we're going to split in that case. Um, it'll give us more time to record Doctor Who. Uh, thank you for listening, if you made it this far. I hope mm. you're enjoying this. I apologise for every accent I've done. <laughs> and... Um, Join us next time when we find out what Mallard's heartwarming journey is going to be like. Yeah, thanks a lot, Red Ribbon Rights. It's been thank it's, you. It's been Red fun Riven so Rights. far. It really has. For I'm having the time letting of us my do life. this. <laughs> thank you for your permission and your patience. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I can only apologise if this isn't what you had in mind. You are a saint. Yes. Yeah. You, and you for everyone listening, um, you know how you can be a saint, giving us a good rating on Spotify. Or any of the platforms you're listening on. Yeah, that would be nice. But also, you know, just thanks for being here. Mm. Uh, yeah. We'll try and do more variety on this. I mean, it's still early days on fanfics and chill, but um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying it so far. Guys, is there, it's been so long. Is there anything else I need to say on the way out? Like, comment, oh. subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. If there's a fic you want us to read in this format, send it in. Ideally, if you're the author, that's great. Um... If not, we'll reach out to the author to get permission first, because I don't want to do this without having the author's permission. Mm. Saying that, if it's something big, like My Immortal or whatever, we can probably read it without the author's permission. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys were really kind of quiet on that. It's like, are you guys okay with that? I don't know. <laughs> um, I just uh, enjoy watching you carry us, to be fair. Oh, God. Don't. So, <laughs> yeah, to be fair. I can only carry us so far. But yeah, thank you. See you next time. Yep, for the thrilling conclusion of, of Mallard. Mallard. Good night. Good night.